Welcome to Season 2 of Busting Addiction and Its Myths, sponsored by Safe House Rehab Thailand, where we offer a modern approach to recovery, breaking with tradition by introducing new technologies that help disrupt the cycle of addiction. To learn more, visit us at safehouserehab.com and click on the video, or contact us at info at safehouserehab.com, and we'll tell you about our $1,000 airfare allowance and referral rewards program. My name is Bruno J. And here's why I created this podcast. Our research has shown that despite the opioid epidemic and the worldwide panic over the ravages of addiction, we didn't see that treatment centers were doing anything different to break the cycle more effectively and improve the odds of long-term success. So we have set out to do things differently and to let all those who love an addict or alcoholic know more about the advances in treatment that we represent. Here's what we're doing differently. We have designed our diagnostics and detox to isolate and treat opioid and multi-addiction, example, alcohol plus opioids plus speed, more effectively, given that these are the new challenges of addiction in the 21st century. We integrate leading-edge technology into the recovering process, thereby disrupting the disorder, speeding the recovery of brain health. Clients come to treatment with damaged brains. This is a given. We pay attention to the importance of dopamine and other ingredients vital to brain health recovery. Traditional rehabs don't provide anywhere near the tools and close guidance that clients truly need to help keep them clean and sober for life. We do it right. First, we advise our clients to go into our sober living facility to serve as a transition to normal life, and we absolutely outperform traditional rehabs when it comes to providing a structure for long-term recovery. So if you love an addict or alcoholic and you feel like your loved one is sucking the oxygen out of your life, is stealing your money, stealing your peace of mind and your sanity, this podcast is for you. If you're feeling rage and shame and, and he or she is living rent-free in your head 24-7, this podcast is for you. I hope to have you gain a better understanding of the nature of addictive disorder and the invisible effect it has on your psyche. It's my fervent hope you also gain a little more compassion for your loved one and for yourself in spite of this cunning, baffling, and powerful disease. To paraphrase an author in this space, we struggle because we love. I call this episode number nine of season two. Finally, research as published by the New York Times proves that AA works and works better than any other approaches. True. So we're entitling this episode, Research Proves AA Works. Simple as that. If you're one of those people who believes what they believe despite any evidence to the contrary, even if it benefits you, then you need not listen any further. But if you're open-minded and believe that science and evidence should shape your attitudes, even if you have a healthy skepticism, then by all means, we have some exciting new findings to share. Here's what showed up in the March 11, 2020 issue of the New York Times Print and Digital Editions. For a long time, medical researchers were unsure whether Alcoholics Anonymous worked better than other approaches to treating people with alcohol use disorder, or they were unsure that it worked at all. Back in 2006, a, re a review of all the evidence available concluded, guess what? that we didn't have enough evidence to judge. So I had to do some more research. That has changed dramatically since a review of the new findings. This updated re review by the Cochrane Collaboration found that AA leads to increased rates and lengths of abstinence compared with other common treatments. What changed was this. This latest review incorporates more and better evidence where the 2006 Cochrane Collaboration Review is based on just eight studies and ended, of course, with a call for more research. By the way, many reviews call for more research, which is a bit self-serving, to be sure. But I myself have been intimately involved in marketing and social science research for decades, and this latest review is absolutely sterling. This new report was a true meta-study of 27 studies that included better, cleaner research to weed out bias and sample problems. So are you bored yet? Well, I hope not. Our source doesn't get any better than John Kelly, a professor of psychiatry at Harvard Medical School and director of the Recovery Research Institute 
at Massachusetts General Hospital, the lead author of the new review we are concerned with today. And he said this, quote, these results demonstrate AA's effectiveness in helping people not only initiate, but sustain abstinence and remission over the long term. He goes on to give AA yet another little boost. He states the following, the fact that AA is free and so widely available is also good news. It's the closest thing in public health that we have to a free lunch, end quote. I have to comment here that AA has been up against cynicism among uninformed members of the public, and especially among ac academics, for a long time because there wasn't scientific evidence. There existed an unwillingness to believe the radical idea that something free and easily available actually works. And there is to this day belief in the myth that AA is a secret society, a cult. What hasn't helped, too, is the news that a famous actor or sports figure tried AA and then relapsed in spectacular and public fashion. As if it was the fault of AA. That's like blaming the gym if you're out of shape. you got to do the work if you want results. Simple as that. Where these findings play themselves out, where they can affect outcomes, is to help break down resistance by alcoholics to seeking help from AA to say, in effect, you can't say A doesn't work because it works better than anything else out there, and the evidence is, is there to support it. One more thing before we quote some numbers. An addict could easily say that 12-step programs don't work, or, so what's the point? I haven't yet scoured the evidence on the effectiveness of NA, uh, such as Narcotics Anonymous or CA uh, Cocaine Anonymous. But does it not stand to reason that if AA works for alcoholics, then NA or CA will also work for addicts? I am well aware that recovering member of AA, NA, or CA will say, of course it works. I am living proof of that. But that ignores the proof among those who fell out that it does not work for them. Rigorous study of programs like AA is challenging because people self-select into them. Those who do so may be more motivated to abstain from drinking than those who don't. So let's take a look at the numbers. Treatments that do not include AA result in about 15 to 25 percent of people who remain abstinent. With AA, it's somewhere between 22 to 37 percent. So the low end for AA is about the high end for other programs. Truth is, other approaches can work too. As with other programs, AA doesn't work all the time. It is often paired with other kinds of treatment that encourage participating in AA. Other treatments include CBT, which is cognitive behavioral therapy in one-on-ones, or group therapy moderated by a counselor in either outpatient or more intensive patient therapies. Here's a telling quote. For people already in treatment, if they add AA to it, their outcomes are superior than those who just got treatment without AA. This is from Keith Humphreys, who's a Stanford University professor and a co-author of the new Cochrane Review. In the United States, despite the news about opioid abu abuse and the destruction that it's caused, alcohol is a larger killer than all other drugs, accounts for the majority of addiction treatment, contributes to half of the 36,000 annual deaths in vehicle accidents, and is ever more deadly. Deaths related to alcohol more than doubled in the last 18 years in the U.S. So the context of my podcast today is mostly about alcohol and the role that AA plays and is, is playing currently in getting and keeping alcoholics sober. If I'm to have any value to my audience, friends, family, and anyone who loves an alcoholic, then I want to let you know that there's always, always hope and that you have already taken a big step by becoming aware of what recovery, especially recovery using AA, has to offer. The science says that the odds are a 37% recovery rate, the high side in AA. But here's how to think about it. If you knew that 27% of the adult population in the U.S. had a four-year college degree or better, does that mean that the odds of a high schooler entering college had only a 27% chance of graduating? No way. What makes the odds closer to 100%? Commitment, that's what. I'm not saying that commitment to AA will get you to 100%, but I am here to tell you the odds are way better than the 37% high side average that science predicts. 
There's another factor that science does not and cannot factor in or measure. In AA, we believe that drinking is just a symptom of a deeper problem. Then the inabilities stop and stay stopped. We say we don't have a drinking problem, but we do have a thinking problem. In only one of AA's 12 steps does the word alcohol appear. And that's in the first step where we, quote, we admitted we were powerless over alcohol and that our lives had become unmanageable. That's a polite way of saying that we were drinking like maniacs probably every day and that our lives had gone to hell. Yeah, the language of AA is rather civilized. Perhaps it's a reflection of the era during which the basic text called Alcoholics Anonymous was written and published, and that year was 1939. Let me share a moment I experienced 26 years ago while in treatment. I had sobered up. I was going to AA, attending group therapy and one-on-ones in an IOP, that stands for Intensive Outpatient Program. So about four months in, I asked my counselor a, a dumb but maybe not so dumb question. Margaret, what's this treatment all about? She looked right at me with a, I can't believe you would ask this question this far into treatment kind of look. <laughs> and she stated in no uncertain terms, young man, the whole point of treatment is to get you to work the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. That rang my bell and has stayed with me all these years. So what's the point of AA? Well, it turns out that we alcoholics are self-centered in the extreme. We hate responsibility. We lie. We cheat. We steal. We want to always take the easier, softer way unless we get obsessed with a goal like status or money. The point of AA is to have us grow as human beings from self-centered takers to compassionate givers, to become empathic people, to live principal lives and not live by our fears or by our desires, to go out there in the real world and become responsible, accountable, honest citizens. And yes, even leaders in our community and with our families. So even though active alcoholism explains what we did to harm others, it doesn't excuse it either. We have to make a list of all the per people we've harmed and to make direct amends to them all. AA will not coddle you or enable you to get away with a half-hearted effort. AA is for grown-ups. Now, if you don't want what we have, you're welcome to go back out there and let us know if it got any better when you come back. Some of you don't come back. Some alcoholics or addicts stay out there and live along the bottom or commit suicide. That's how we talk in AA straight up, but with love. So what have we learned today? One, AA has always had its detractors, but it's possible that some or not all people can come around and believe AA is a worthwhile resource if they're presented the right amount of evidence, the, right, the quality and amount of evidence. Two, the most comprehensive study ever reported by the venerable New York Times conclusively demonstrates that AA is the most effective program among all those studied, 27 studies in all, in getting and keeping people sober. Moreover, number three, where AA was part of a larger program, the success rate was better than in other non-A-related approaches. Number four, this is a quote, AA is the closest thing to a free lunch in public health, so it's free and it's everywhere, according to John Kelly. Number five, Finally, there is one thing that science hasn't been able to measure so far, the degree to which AA helps rebuild one's personal character. For it's not about just staying sober, it's about growing up and holding ourselves accountable as honest citizens. Thank you for tuning in today. It's my fervent hope we've given you new insight and new hope that will lighten your burden where our hearts go out to all who suffer the effects of addictive disorder. Please give us your feedback at info at safehouserehab.com. By all means, ask us any question you like, and we'll answer on air if you will. And if you want to leave us your first name and city, we'll recognize you too, of course. This podcast is sponsored by safehouserehab.com, where we take a modern approach to recovery, something all families of those who suffer deserve. Tune in next week for more.